How did you do that? How did you do that? There are about a bajillion things to do in Forza Horizon 4. Climbing leaderboards, accumulating cars, hell, the Goliath doesn't even open until you reach level 20 in the road racing series. This game's got more layers to it than an onion. Layers! Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers? You get it! We both have layers! Probably one of the more challenging things to do are the Horizon storylines, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. I am Skywarp72 with Cruisers Gaming, and in this episode, I'll be doing a walkthrough of the in-game YouTuber LaRacer's storyline that pays homage to some of the great racing games of days gone by. These are some illustrated tips and tricks to gain three-star status on each one, not only to get you closer to a few achievements pertaining to the stories, but to win that sweet Monte Carlo SS, you can only get through the LaRacer storyline. Before we get to helping you out with that, maybe do me a solid and help me out by checking that subscribe button and the bell icon to stay up to date on all the Horizon content coming your way. Stay up to date on the Forza franchise by joining the Cruisers Gaming Facebook group and or the Cruiser Discord and maybe even give me a watch on Twitch. All the links to all these will be in the description down below. And on a side note, let it be known, I did all these missions with no assists. <laughs> And if you want the same results, you might want to do so as well. Except for the driving line, which is super helpful at the beginning of any Horizon game, and you don't have the routes memorized just as of yet. Some of these missions have tricks to them. Some of them don't, you just require you to drive fast and memorize the route. So let's get started with number 10 on the list, which pays homage to Sega Turbo Outrun Arcade Game. Which, if Larissa remembers, just how old is she? Anyways, remember, I'm running no traction or stability on a regular controller using manual with clutch. Now, these roads, they lend to keeping an average speed up. For this one and a few others, just make sure you make clip the apexes and avoid all the traffic cars. Now, clipping the grass here can save a second or two, but the real trick comes here at the end of these S-curves. As you can see, there is no penalty for driving the Ferrari off-road. However, it does not drive off-road well, so you probably want to wait to the very end to, uh, to cut these S's. Moving on to number 9, this one's got a real nifty trick to it because it tricks you into fooling that there's actually checkpoints here, but there's not. If you open up your map here, you can see that you can turn right out of the festival and cut off a bunch of space on this challenge, which we'd be giving you an easy 3 stars, and as you can see on mine, I screwed it up and still got 3 stars. Now this particular mission at number 8 pays homage to the original test drive in the Lamborghini Countach. There isn't really a trick to this one. This one is really about all speed. Now you've got plenty of time to actually get to the speed trap where you need to do, I think it's 241 through, or at least 241. And the Lamborghini Countach kind of argues a little bit <laughs> going 241 miles an hour. The real trick to this one is having good speed up to this last corner and then clipping the apex real nice and smooth through this corner so you carry as much speed as possible through the speed trap. Number seven is probably the most unenjoyable thing to do in the entire game because you have to take this Ferrari 
I don't know why I'm calling it a Ferrari, because really, it's got the power of a friggin' Yugo, and you gotta clutch pop the crap out of this thing in first and second gear to get it to do anything. However, the whole idea of the mission is to gain X amount of skill points to gain three stars. And that's only after a very long, boring drive from the stunt place clear up to Edinburgh without any fast travel or anything in this car that is just completely unenjoyable to drive. So to keep the skill chain alive that you need to do, you need to constantly clutch pop this thing and drift it. Obviously taking out as much civilian stuff in the meantime as you can. Uh, and this is much easier in a car with a much higher PI or... Heck, I think this thing was already a higher PI. Seriously, this car is gutless! You might have to do this one more than once. Your best bet is really to find a grassy area in town that doesn't have a whole lot of trees in it and just go and do donuts and drift around in the grass area. Just remember that the drive there means nothing. Everything is based on your skill chain once you reach Edinburgh. Number six on the list puts us in this sweet ass Monte Carlo SS. If you couldn't tell, I'm a huge fan of these cars. The game it's paying homage to is Daytona USA, which was an arcade cabinet racer, and it was a complete blast because when I was a little kid, I used to go into the arcade and decimate adults' times on that game. Anyway, I'm sorry, back to the tips and tricks at hand. Now, remember what I said earlier about clipping apexes and keeping the average speed up? This is one you're probably going to have to run more than once, as it's going to make you memorize the route. I screwed up, I screwed this thing up so bad so many times, it was kind of silly. So, run it a few times. Memorize the route. Memorize the couple of corners that keep screwing you up. Then, make an all-out speed run to get three stars. Number five, paying homage to Crazy Taxi. This is the easiest one on the list, and it's just as simple as keeping your speed up and hitting this jump. This jump is one of the easiest in the game. I even got the Ground Force achievement with the Iron Knight on it, for crying out loud. Uh, and that video is also on the channel, a how-to that, and I'll make sure to link it at the end of this video. As you can see, easiest one. Moving on. And from easy to tricky again, number four pays homage to Sega Rally. This one gets a little tricky, so gotta pay attention to this one. From the very start here, what you want to do is you want to slam this thing in reverse and take a shorter route through the festival. You have to do it fast because if you spend more than 10 seconds off of a dirt road, then you fail the entire mission. Now remember, you're allowed to be off the dirt road for 10 seconds, so when you come up to this major left-hand corner here, just take a little shortcut through the woods, to make sure you're not off the road for more than 10 seconds, and just keep on trucking. Now run this dirt road all the way down close to the end here. Now as you run the rest of the route, you can see there's a couple other little places to cut. Nothing as big as the big left-hander that I just showed you, but just, just make sure to get creative and run off the road some places. Even if your counter comes on, it's not going to matter because you're not going to be off the road for more than a few seconds anyway. Coming in at number three, paying homage to Ivan Iron Man Stewart's Super Off Road is this challenge here. God, I love that game. Hell, I still got it from my original Nintendo. Anyway, keep in mind the drive to the place, you're driving to the quarry, and it doesn't matter. The drive is just like it is on seven. It doesn't matter. Just get there. This is one of the easier ones. All you gotta do is a simple skill chain, which is super easy with this off road truck. Just drift around, do your thing. Moving on.
Ridge Racer comes in at number two while you drive this 92 Acura NSX. And playing this, actually, my friends told me that there was an arcade version of Ridge Racer. I only ever played it in the arcade where you could actually grip the crap out of the car while you sat with the steering wheel and pedals, man. You just can't beat that. As you can see, it's another one of those where it's 10 seconds off the intended route and you fail. There's a couple of places early on to cut the track, but the rest of it really is just like I said earlier, fast apexes, keeping up an average speed, and not hitting any of the traffic cars, which I don't think there's even any traffic cars in this one. So you're going to have to maybe run this one once or twice, learn the route really well, learn how well this car handles. Unlike Ridge Racer, the Ridge Racer I played in the arcade, you don't want to drift this thing around a whole lot. You want, to, you want this thing to grip and go, and this car does. It handles beautifully. Moving on. Last but not least, they finally pay homage to, not a game, but a car that's in most every racing game, and that's the Porsche 911. Now you'd think since this was the last one, it'd be the hardest. Really, in my personal opinion, I think 7's the hardest, but maybe we can discuss that in the comments below. Anyways, this one you can pretty much just cruise up to the last corner uh, before your speed trap, and then just gain all the speed you can, again, clipping the apexes, making sure you're carrying the highest average speed, and avoiding any kind of traffic cars that might be in your way. And just going through the speed trap, and I think it's uh, 141. Uh, it'll, it'll say so when it, when it, when it does. And there it is, a complete guide to getting three stars on all of the racer's missions. Stay tuned and sub to Cruisers Motorsports here as I'll also be doing a walkthrough for the movie stunt series, as those have some tricks to them as well. Make sure you check the description below for links for all the aforementioned goodies, plus the Horizon 4 car wishlist thread for Forza so you can help me vote in an 88 or 89 Chevrolet Beretta GTU to make an appearance in the game. Doing so could even earn you a subscriber shout out here on the channel. I hope this walkthrough helped you out, my friends, and remember those friends, they're the family you get to choose. I'll see you next time, fellow cruisers.